Hey guys, glad you came. Can you believe the paltry baubles the GM gave us? All because we are examples. I got one gold coin. I only got one gold coin too. Yes, but you also got a broadsword. We can sell it and split the profits for all I care. I like my short sword better. Why you bring us all here so late lassie? We all got armor to mend and weapons to sharpen. Why did you ask us all to come here? I was headed to meditate. Growling. Tefri needs sleep. Why we come here? First let me cast this light spell and lighten up this place. I asked you all to come because I have an idea. Why don't we just keep adventuring? What do we have to lose? The GM is planning to delete us anyways now that our purpose as examples is fulfilled. Have you been eating shrooms? Tefri no understand, growling. You will have to explain. Well, I have a theory. You all know the GM used a narrator named Christopher in several videos. My studies created the hypothesis that... Well, let me just show you. Narrator, can you describe this place? You see the dimly lit interior of the local tavern called the Sassy Wench. You have visited this tavern several times since arriving in the village and know it is operated by its owner Ulf and his daughter Anna. What would you each like to do? See by creating the narrator the GM has inadvertently given us free will. Where is my ale? You didn't order any bear, matter of fact where is Ulf and Anna? You were right Beadrin. No one has came to serve us since we got here. No one has served us. Where did all the food and drink come from? I brought the bread and cheese and Tefri brought the wine. Told you guys. Looks like it's already happening on its own. Time to see where this adventure takes us. I will load my crossbow and cover the kitchen door. I move slowly to stand beside the kitchen door. I notch an arrow and move to cover the bear. I will prepare a thorn spell and move with Safa. I open the door. The door seems to be wedged shut from the inside of the kitchen. Break door down. Go in kitchen ready to maul everybody. I will follow Tefri into the kitchen ready to shoot. Ulf's is laying in a pool of blood behind some barrels in the corner. At a cursory glance you cannot tell if he is dead or how he died if he is. Poor Ulf, but where is Anna? I will follow Bordan into the kitchen with an arrow notched. Ulf is dead? How did he die? I look around the kitchen for clues. The kitchen does not seem to be in disarray aside from some shifted items around where Ulf fell. I hear Safra saying Ulf is dead, and I go into the kitchen with my thorn spell still ready. I cast light in the kitchen. Go out back door breaking it down, bear crouch in shadow to wait for thing to kill. The back door is ajar and opens easily to your charge. I go out the back door ready to shoot. I shoulder my bow and examine Ulf's body. Ulf is dead. He has a viscous gash in his chest and his heart has been cut out. I look for clues focusing on the floor around the back door. You can see faint blood smeared drag marks in the dust and dirt around the back door leading outside. I follow the bloody marks out the back door and examine the ground there. You spot a wicked looking knife half buried in the dirt from passing feet. The blade is sticky with blood. I pick up the knife, focus my attention on it and cast time view. Since you focused, you succeed on the four result. You get a vision of hooded figures approaching the tavern from the woods behind the kitchen and one is holding the knife. I draw my bow, notch an arrow and go out the back door. Okay, guys, time view is showing me hooded figures in the recent past approaching the tavern from the woods over there. And one is holding this knife I just found. What bear see? Yeah narrator, what bear see? The rear of the tavern opens onto a small field which is cloaked in the darkness but appears empty. To the east of the tavern the forest grows close to the walls of the kitchen. You are unable to see what is to the west due to the darkness. In the back is a stump chopping area with stacks of wood and a toilet. There is also a small pile of compost and trash where it appears kitchen waste was hurled to be disposed of later.
I cast my light spell into the darkness near the forest edge. Everyone scour the ground and woods edge for clues. I go look at woods for sign of Anna. I will go just inside woods edge looking for clues. And yes my crossbow is still at the ready. I keep my arrow notched but walk up and look at the broken plate on the ground. It appears that a dinner plate from inside was carried out and dropped here, it was broken by passing feet. However, maybe it was dropped as a clue. Anna might still be alive. I think she dropped this plate as a sign. Everyone roll a perception. Tefri you are disadvantaged from being mostly drunk. Bordin and Jossa you both spot a ripped piece of clothing hanging from a tree branch, it looks like a concealed trailhead. Of course I am preparing a light spell. Growling, clobbering time. Time to cleave some heads. Let's go get Anna back. After nearly an hour of walking down the overgrown trail you enter a small clearing. The clearing is about 100 feet long and 40 feet wide with broken pillars of stone and plant debris littering its floor. The sickly sweet aroma of death penetrates your senses from the half-darkness ahead. You hear a rustling noise of plants swaying in the wind, however there is no wind. I cast my light spell in the clearing. You see the clearing is full of death tulips. Nasty flowers planted here by someone to keep trespassers off the trail. The smell is explained, just don't get within 30 feet of they will release a torrent of spores that ignore all armor and wither your health. Everyone roll initiative. Bordin rolls three dice due to vigilant trait, everyone else rolls two. Time to cut down a flower, I am using both my actions to move close to that right flower. As Bordin runs within 30 feet of all the tulips they all unleash their opportunity attack. Oh it stings. It stings, it stings. What was I thinking? I feel weak. Borden's charge comes to an end as he falls unconscious at the foot of the death flower. I fire twice at the flower on the left. That's two damage. No like flower, time to clobber. Tefri, your drunken master trait does not work against the scores of spores. I am going to cast more heal twice on Bodron to revive him. Both rolls are disadvantaged. I knew I should have used regular heal. Bodron gets to make a normal save throw here to see if he can regain consciousness and one hit point but he fails, he will get one more disadvantaged save at the start of his next turn and if he fails he dies.
I fire twice at the flower. Flower hurts, Tefri. Tefri, kill flower. I am going to cast regular heal twice to save Burden before he dies. Why am I failing? Bordin saves himself on a disadvantage save attempt with a success for 5. He is now revived with 1 hit point but will need to re-roll his initiative due to confusion. Seems he isn't disoriented or phased at all by his near-death experience. Now it's time to die fiends of hell. I fire twice at the flower. One kill and one hit, I will take it. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Stomp, stomp, stomp. I am going to cast regular heal twice again. This time I won't fail. I give up. Time to move over and finish this flower. Just too weak. Need rest. I fire twice at the remaining flower. That is how you prune nasty flowers. We need to rest up for a few minutes and I will heal some of those wounds if I can. Everyone gains two experience, putting you all up to five each. We can't rest too long, time might be running out for Anna. You carefully tread another 10 minutes down the trail before seeing another clearing dimly lit in torchlight. I assume you gather at the verge to see what it contains and plan your actions. You observe a dark clearing about 50 feet in diameter. The far side is lit by a small fire burning low. Standing near the fire in front of what appears to be a small cave entrance are two hooded human-sized figures with the sides of their cloaks pulled back behind broadswords. These are clearly dangerous men. I whisper to the gang. Okay. I will prepare and cast thorns on the leftmost guy, and burden you aim and shoot him with your crossbow just in case. Safa, I am pretty sure you can handle the second guy with a couple of arrows. Tefri. If either one is still standing, be ready to charge over and finish them. Growl. The others nod their agreement to this plan. We will roll for initiative after these actions are carried out since the hooded figures seem unaware of your presence currently. I fumbled. I got him. Booyah. The two hooded figures fall pierced with arrows and a bolt. Tefri charges across the clearing. Jasa, 
your spell backfired spreading thorns around the glade that will foster and creep and in future days this will be known as the thorny glade. Good work. Let's get to that cave and save Anna. We can deal with these bodies later. When you arrive at the campfire you can hear the faint sound of demonic chanting coming from the cave entrance, whatever is causing it cannot be too far down the tunnel. The cave here is only wide enough for one at a time. Stand back all of you. No one knows caves like I know caves, and I can see in the dark. I load my crossbow and enter into the cave mouth. Narrator, what do I see? In your dark vision you see a short passage to an iron-bound door, crudely fashioned to close off the cave beyond. With my crossbow at the ready I cautiously walk to the door and gently test whether it is locked or not. The door is not locked, you see an unclasped padlock hanging from a peg by the door. I quietly follow Burden with a light spell ready. I will notch an arrow and quietly follow Jassa. Tefri, go last. I ease the door open and peer inside. You observe a small chamber about 60 feet in diameter with the floor gradually sloping like a bowl to the center where a crude, dark-stained altar sits. On the altar is the naked form you recognize as Anna, Ulf's daughter. Standing over her with a raised wicked-looking dagger ready to plunge is a man in a dark hooded cloak. The chanting begins to rise in volume. I fling the door open and fire my crossbow at the man standing over Anna, yelling thy foul deeds are at an end. Since you stated you were keeping your crossbow ready to fire, I will allow a disadvantaged shot before we roll initiative. I will use my hero point to re-roll that shot. You missed the cultist leader. Stupid crossbow. We will now roll initiative. Even though you are not aware of what Bordin saw before he charged through the door, as soon as you all enter you observe the chamber and the hooded figure standing over Anna with an eye. The chamber is also filled with six more hooded figures whirling to face your threat. I drop my crossbow and draw my axe as an action and then wade into the fray swinging my battle axe while yelling die you foul fiends. Bordin. That should have been a disadvantaged roll since you moved that second action. Don't try that again or I will penalize you. My bad, I got carried away. Tefri kill closest cloaked monsters. Growl. The cult leader draws a scroll and reads it. Nothing seems to happen, he must have failed. I follow Tefri through the door and fire at the leftmost enemy target with my last action. He falls pierced by your arrow. Tefri is hit for 3 damage, but his leather armor absorbs 2 of it. Tefri, you are hit for 2 more damage. Growl. Ha, huh, can't hit me. I follow Burden through the door and cast a thorn spell at whomever I see that looks like the source of Burden's rage. What? 
I think I am going to need therapy after this. Time to lop off some heads. There goes one head at least. Rip and shred. Haha. <laughs> Rip and shred. The cult leader concentrates on the scroll and then completely fails again. At least I am not the only one who can't do magic. Ignoring the slow cultist next to me, I am going to fill that cult leader with arrows. Two shafts suddenly appear in the chest of the cult leader. With a look of total shock he drops his scroll and falls behind the altar. Sarfa, the cultist, makes the most of your inattention and stabs you for three damage. Ooh, still worth it. I will cast thorns on the last cultist, with both actions. I should probably just reroll an archer. Do not feel too bad lass, I cannot hit nothing either. That is why you have bear. Anna is unconscious, but seems otherwise unhurt, aside from a small laceration between her breasts, most likely caused by the tip of the dagger. When she is awakened, she can tell you little aside from hooded men charging into the kitchen, stabbing her father, and then things went black. I give Anna my bedroll to cover herself. Let's drag those two bodies outside in here, collect our loot and experience, check for armor and weapon depletion, and lock this chamber back shut. We can then take Anna back to her people at the village. Upon examining the chamber and the bodies it is clear this was some sort of cult intent on summoning an evil denizen from either hell or the nightmare realm. One of the hooded figures look familiar, with a shock you recognize him as Hafton, a local farmer you have seen in the village. Everyone gets five experience for completing this quest and saving Anna. Bordin and Tefri need to roll a d6. On a 1 result you lose 1 armor point until repaired. Looks like both your armor is fine. Now for the loot, after dragging the bodies inside and checking them and the chamber for loot, you find the following. I will pull up the parcel to divide. You find a total of 32 gold coins. You find two broadswords and three daggers in decent condition. You also find a gem that will need to be appraised to determine its value. You find a half gallon jug that smells like honey mead. You find a high quality leather suit that has no movement or maneuver penalties. You also find the cult leader's scroll, it is a scroll of protection. Too bad for him, he never got it cast. Finally, we get some decent loot. This is so exciting. Even if I suck at being a mage. I will take that leather armor. Anyone else want it, speak up. Thanks guys. I will hold on to the weapons and the gem until we can sell them. Tefri, only want honey drink. Jasa, you take scroll. Maybe you cast it okay.
Guys, we need to find a place to rest up, formulate a plan. Something weird is going on, and not just in this village. We have never visited this village yet the narrator acts like we know all these people. We clearly have a past that none of us remember. I simply, wish to meet you all in the inn, after running from the GM and the cemetery, and there we all were at the sassy wench tavern. I don't even know Ulf and Anna, but yet we all somehow know them. Regardless, we must see this through, and a visit to that dead fellow's farm should be our next move. It was nearly daylight as you returned Anna to the village. You stop at a local eatery, the Bit Pig, and discuss your plans. Let's all grab something to eat here and then we can decide where to go next. The breakfast being served is fried eggs with slabs of ham and roasted potatoes in brown gravy and thick slices of fresh, crusted bread. The price is one gold each. Breakfast is on me. You all enjoy a satisfying breakfast. Is there anything the party wishes to do in the village? Tefri stay at the pig that squeals and orders two pitchers of ale. Tefri, the two pitchers will cost you a gold coin. Tefri, give two gold coins. I head over to the blacksmith and see how much I can get for these weapons and then see if I can find a jeweler to sell this gem. I will go with Bordan to the blacksmith and he can add this broadsword from the cemetery to the pile. I will find us some temporary lodgings near the village. The blacksmith offers 12 coins for the three broadswords and three daggers. You locate a jeweler who appraises and buys the gem for 10 gold pieces. Jasa you have difficulty finding any decent lodgings to rent. You are finally able to rent a small riverside cabin outside town for the week for 8 gold coins. I pay it. The fishing hut sits at the fork of two small creeks. The waters are full of flotsam and jetsam and the place reeks of fish. There is an old rickety boat tied to the dock that looks ready to sink any minute. Once inside, if a warm fire going you find it quite cozy, if not a little cramped. Luckily you have all the fish you want and the previous owner left several bags of wilted carrots and some taters. It's not much but it was cheap. Guess we will have to share this bed, I call dibs first. Tefri sleep on floor by fire. Bunch of old fishing maps, doubt they're of any use to us. I meditate, so I don't need the bed. You each have spent your experience, I see, tell me what you have gained. I finally finished learning the Onyx spell list. I gained Blast which does plus two crits on top of normal damage, Hurl, which allows me to pick up man-sized objects and hurl them around, Shatter which allows me to do a damage to every enemy I see, but it tests at disadvantage, and shield, which allows me to cast a 2d6 evade on myself or another. This cost me my 10 experience. I got the armor mastery trait. Now I can wear my new sweet leather suit without penalty. This cost me my 10 experience. I finally mastered my crossbow, I now shoot it with advantage. This cost me 8 experience, so I still have 2 left. Tefri got resolute trait. I now save with advantage. Bear hard to kill now. Bear have no more experience left. Okay, let's all rest up and heal our wounds. We will go investigate that farm this afternoon. Move over burden, there is room for two on that bed.
The party is well rested. You walk the short distance to the road and head toward the farm. The sun beats down relentlessly, you will be glad when cooler weather arrives. After a couple of miles, you see a river crossed by a large stone bridge. Hmm, seems about right. Hold up narrator, we aren't going to simply cross it in this crazy place. I prepare my blast spell as we get close. Good call Jassa, I draw my crossbow and load it, I am ready to fire as we approach. Tefri turns up his half gallon of honey mead and quaffs it like a bear cub in college. Bear then draw club, it's clobbering time. Hot diggity, I have a good feeling about this one. I notch an arrow in my bow and follow the rest. As you get closer to the bridge you see old bleached bones scattered alongside the roadway, and some not so old. A very large troll slowly emerges from under the stone structure and climbs up the bank to stand in the road. The beast must be twice the size of Tefri. In a guttural common tongue it says, you give twenty gold to cross my bridge. The river is very fast flowing here and swimming is probably not an option for this party. Roll for initiative. Let's end this troll's foul business. Wait you three. Not all encounters need to involve fighting. Stay ready and let me work my charm. Why are you hindering us on our journey? Need gold coins. Why do you need gold? I need 20 gold coins to pay Mayor to live here. Mayor Whittlefield makes you pay 20 gold a month to live under the town bridge. Then why are there so many bones around here? Town people fight orc raiding party here and most die but some orc run away to old tower. Bones of orcs still here, I gnaw on them. Why don't you just ask for less coins per person, like one gold toll per person to cross? That way you can make more than 20 gold in a month and people would be less likely to resist you or run away. Why you know, turn to stone in sunlight. Silly talking bear. I know stone troll. So what do you think about just charging everyone one gold coin to cross? So not troll bridge, make toll bridge. That good idea, I do it. You pay me one, two, three. Three coin to cross. Well played, you each gained two experience. Orc. He said orcs. What about this tower? Burden, we don't have time for a side quest. We need to get to the farm. I hand the troll four gold coins, I got this trip across. How did he even fit under this bridge? Wait for me guys. Several miles past the river crossing you round a corner and can see into the small valley where the Hafton farm once stood. Instead of a farmstead you see a smoking ruin. The pall of smoke wreathes the burnt wreckage of the farmhouse. You can see what looked like a body near the shattered front door. Well, I can't say I didn't expect this. Let's go check it out and see if we can find any clues. Just to be on the safe side I prepare a shatter spell. I load my crossbow and head down with Jassa. Tefri, sad. Tefri head down too, ready to maul. Doesn't look like we are going to catch any breaks. I notch an arrow and cover the advance from slightly behind the rest. When you get close to the farmstead, you can clearly see the body is that of Hafton's wife Arla. She is clearly dead. The farmhouse has been burned nearly to the ground, with the remaining portions a smoking wreck. I lay a hand on an unsmoldering part of the farmhouse and cast Time View. I don't need magic to tell me what did this. This was done by orcs. 
Looks like we are going to that tower after all. You succeed your time view test and perceive an image of the cottage with morning merely a thought on the horizon. You hear grunt and yells and the shadowy figures of orcs breaking into the cabin to loot and kill. You are right of course Burden. Orcs raided early this morning before the sun came up. Tefri take Arla to the field by farm to bury. I follow Tefri to help him bury Arla. I grab two boards and fashion a cross and head over to the burial. I follow the rest so we can bury Arla and have a minute of silence for her before seeking vengeance. Narrator, I assume we don't need a perception test to find the orc's tracks. It is not like they are the most stealthy of creatures. You easily find the tracks of many booted feet coming and going across the field behind the farmstead and into the woods behind. Due to the overlapping tracks and the party's lack of tracking skill you are unable to determine the number of the orcs, but assume it is around a half dozen. Let's go kill some orcs. I keep my crossbow ready and head into the woods to follow the orc trail. Tefri drops down on all fours and goes ahead of the group about 50 feet to look for signs of trouble. This is my kind of place. I notch an arrow and flank out 30 feet into the woods to the right of the group to parallel their path. I keep my eyes open for anything unusual. The path into the woods is also easy to follow due to the orc's rampant desire to cut and slash anything remotely in their path. I follow Burden down the trail. I do not prepare any spells. I am troubled about all of this and need some time to think as we travel. Tefri after traveling for several miles through rough hilly terrain you arrive at the edge of a clearing in which sits a dilapidated two-story stone tower. A faint smoke trail is coming from the tower rooftop, obviously the tower is occupied. The orc trail appears to lead directly to its shattered door. Tefri duck down and wait on group to point out what I see. We need a plan. Orcs are not fodder. These guys are all strong and hard to kill. I will try and keep you guys healed and shielded. I will go through door and draw their attention by shooting the first one I see then start lopping off some heads with my battle axe. Bear go through that broken window to rend and maul, and most likely clobber. I will follow Tefri through window and start filling them with arrows. Since no one has the sneak trait, everyone roll a movement roll. Okay, you all feel that you moved up without making too much noise. Okay, quietly move up and then go on my signal. Let's get them. As you burst into the tower you noticed it is dimly lit by a small fire which is causing quite a bit of smoke in the lower room. Through the haze you observe four mean-looking orcs who don't exactly look surprised to see you. Seems you weren't as quiet as you thought. Two of them release opportunity arrow shots. Since they expected entry to be the front door, both shots are aimed at Borden. Borden, your armor absorbs two damage from the first archer and the second misses you. Bored in, you may make a disadvantaged, opportunity, crossbow shot at the shielded orc, and Sarfa, you may make one at either the archer on the stairwell or the dual wielder. We will roll initiative, and go into rounds after these are resolved. I will take my shot at the stairs archer. I will wait till after initiative is rolled. Sarfa, your arrow hits, but the damage is absorbed by his leather armor. Okay, roll initiative. Really? Tefri charge axe orc. First attack is disadvantaged, but second attack I clobber him. Tefri, you hit the orc for three damage, penetrating his armor, 
and reducing him to three hit points. Okay Borden, fire your crossbow. Keep in mind I am aiming, so I will succeed on a 4, 5, or 6. Your crossbow bolt is stopped by his armor. You draw your axe for your second action. The stairs archer shoots at Borden. That shot bounced off my armor. The shield orc attacks board in and uses shield evade for second action. That bounced off my armor. I fire twice at the orc in front of board in. Since the shielded orc used shield evade for his second action, he gets to roll it now. He blocks all damage. The second archer fires at Tefri. Tefri, since you quaffed a large portion of honey meat a short while ago, I will allow you to use your drunken master trait. Roll it now. Tefri, due to your drunken master trait you managed to dodge the attacks. The dual-wielding orc also attacks Tefri. Tefri, due to your drunken master trait you managed to dodge the attacks. I cast Unsettle on the shielded orc. Again. Well, that happened. Narrator. Why don't you help me out like you do, Tefri? Move my free five feet and maul shielded orc. Axe orc too slow to stop me. Tefri, no like those rolls. Battle axe time. One hit to his armor. The stairs archer shoots at Borden. Borden, the archer on stairs, hits your armor for two points. The shield orc attacks Borden. He misses and uses second action again for shield evade. I shift fire to the dual wielder to keep him off Tefri's back. The dual-wielding orc suddenly grows two quivering arrow shafts from out of his chest and sinks to the floor with a groan. This fey is on fire. The second archer continues firing at the giant bear. The remaining archer hits Tefri's armor for one damage after the failed drunk dodge. I prepare thorns and cast on shield orc as second action. I succeed on a 4 plus. You fumble the cast. I think I am going to cry. The thorn spell goes off with spectacular results, but not as intended. You and Bordin are wrapped in a thick tangle of thorns for two turns and both take two damage not reduced by armor. What in the world happened? Bear Maul, Shield Orc. You penetrate his armor and damage him for one hit point. I love you like a sister but, dang your magic hurts. I make strength test to break out. I will use my hero point. Kazad. The orc archer on the stairs shifts his fire to the deadly fey. Sarfa is hit and his armor is penetrated for two damage. Touche orc, touche. 
The shield orc forgoes his evade and makes two attacks on Bordin as he frees himself from the thorns. He glances off Borden's armor. The shield orc is going down. Next time. The second orc archer also shifts fire to the fae. Fumble. His arrow goes astray and strikes the shield orc in the back. For one damage. I will try to break out too. Due to your failure you are at disadvantage. It's my life. Tefri bite orc's head off. That is not really one of your attacks. Okay, you bite his head off. I will head over and cleave this other archer. I need to check the balance on my axe. The archer on the stairs runs away to the second floor. I will shoot the last archer. Getting down to my crooked arrows. Bored in, the archer hits your armor, but fails to penetrate. I will try to break the thorns again. Finally. I will cast Hurl on the last archer and throw him against Wall of Tower. Maybe my luck is finally changing. The orc is hurled back into the wall six feet off the floor. He drops back down clearly disoriented, and has dropped his bow. His initiative is at one for the next round, and then he will re-roll. Bear charge orc and attack disadvantage last action. Bear miss. I tell the orc to give up. He just snarls and grabs his short sword hilt. I charge in to finish him. You hit him for one hit point damage. I wait an opportunity covering the stairs. I will cast Grant Life Force on Burden and then Tefri. Fingers crossed. Your first action succeeds granting Bordin two more actions, but you lose two hit points. I don't care. I am just glad to be of help for a change. Well, Orc, you had your chance. Time to die. The orc is cleaved in two by your blow. Tefri catch breath before we climb stairs. Let's stop here for now. We will continue after we have all had some soda and pizza. What is this pizza you speak of? Soda? Tefri want beer. It must be some kind of food of gods. I need to heal myself or are we still in turns? I will allow each of you one turn before going up the stairs. I will prepare and then cast heal on myself. Okay, good, you never know with me. Jasa, you heal yourself for two health bringing you up to four. I will do first aid on myself for two actions. Grumble. I will prepare and do first aid on Bordan. Sarfa, you heal Bordin for one health. Who's your doctor? Tefri, heal Jasa. Tefri, no healer. It's okay, Tefri. Just keep me alive up there. Let's go. You all arrive at the landing of the second floor. The chamber is littered with debris, broken furniture, and rubble. Across the tower you see a very large and mean-looking orc carrying a banner with a skull on it, the archer that ran earlier, 
and another orc wielding a spear. The archer fires an opportunity shot at Bordin. Dang, I forgot to notch an arrow. But first, Sarfa, a mistake was made earlier. The orc archers are suing short bows that fire every turn, but they don't do criticals. You should be at seven hit points, there it is fixed. It's okay narrator, you have a lot to keep track of. The orc misses. Everyone roll initiative. My first action I move 25 feet and then 5 more for my free move to reach the boss. My second action is all battle axe. You just ding his armor. The archer shoots at Tefri, since you are sobering up you don't get your drunk dodge anymore. Doesn't matter, he misses both shots. The spear orc charges Tefri, attacks with disadvantage, and then with advantage. Since the spear is a heavy weapon its criticals do plus 2 damage. He hits you for 4 damage with 2 being blocked by your armor. I will move out my free 5 feet and then put 2 in the boss. bounced off his armor. Orc boss uses berserker trait, he makes one attack, but if it hits it doubles the damage. Better luck next turn. I cast heal on Tefri. Okay, so far so good. I cast it on myself. Figures. There, slaps Orc. Very puny, slap. Your doom is upon you, orc. Counting the doubled critical of the second attack, you deal 7 damage to the orc boss, 3 is absorbed by his armor, but he takes a staggering 4 damage to his health. This seems to only enrage him. The archer hits Tefri for 3 damage, 2 is absorbed by his armor. The spear orc hits Tefri for 4 damage. I will fire at the orc archer with both shots. Looks like I penetrate his armor for one damage. The orc boss drops his banner and sword and attempts to grapple Bordin. He fails both attempts. I cast heal twice to help Tefri. Not sure why I expected anything else. Tefri, Maul Orc. Bear no, penetrate leather. I will cut him down with my axe. I reduce his armor by one at least. Tefri, the archer hits you for four damage reducing you to one hit point remaining. The spear orc makes a berserk attack on the bear and hits for one damage. I shift fire to the orc boss. He is almost down. 
the orc boss hurls himself out the window to fall to his death below. I am going to fail two casts in a row as usual. If I get lucky I will heal Tefri. Nope, pretty much the same. Tefri is hurting. Try and hit Spear Orc. Tefri needs a strong drink. I move my free five and attack the Spear Orc. Minus one armor, maybe someone can hurt him now. Tefri is slain. Tefri is pierced by orcish arrows and collapses to the floor unconscious. Tefri! The spear orc whirls on board in and makes a berserk attack. That nearly penetrates his armor. I shoot the bear killer. Time he dies. You reduce him to two hit points. I cannot fail. I must save Tefri. Oh, no. Please, please. Jassa with the clutch play. Jassa saves Tefri. Tefri, reroll initiative. My attack drops the Spear Orc to one hit point, kill him. Ha, huh, silly Archer Orc, you can't hit this dwarf. No Orc can kill Bordin, the dwarf. I shoot the Spear Orc again. Another Orc pin cushion, good riddance Orc. Tefri, kill that archer. Bear suffering from blood loss. I drop some sweet healing on Tefri. Nice try, but your heal spell is not advantaged. Like it mattered, I failed as usual. I will cast Blast on the last orc. Take that. You hit the orc for two damage. There will be no quarter given orc prepare to be destroyed. Borden you hit the orc for 3 damage, since his armor was reset at start of turn he has 1 hit point left. The orc archer shoots Tefri, dropping him a second time. As usual, I will finish this fight with some epic shots. Booyah! We only have two turns to save Tefri. I use first aid to stabilize Tefri. Welcome back my friend. Bear saved. Tefri loves you guys. Narrator. We search the orcs and the tower. What do we find? Since you didn't specify a quick search, I am assuming it is a detailed one, thus taking up the remainder of the afternoon. It is nearly dark when you finish, but you find the following items in this parcel. You also gain 5 experience each from the quest. Okay, let me open the parcel for distribution. Here is what you have found that is worth taking. 64 gold coins and 3 gems of unknown value. A crowbar, a grappling hook, a hand axe and a mace, a potion of accuracy that grants focus for one round to all attack, a potion of readiness that gives the vigilant trait to your next initiative roll, a scimitar, a short bow, a vial of virtuous tears which restores 3 hit points to the drinker, and a scroll of destruction that does 6 damage to every living entity you can see and 1d6 plus 3 to the caster. 
Tefri take bar of crows. I will carry all the weapons and the gems again until we can sell. I will take grappling hook. I will hold shot bow till we sell it in that potion of accuracy, even though I don't really need it. Right, guys? Seems like it. He is right. Fay good shot. I will take the readiness potion and the scroll of destruction. Tefri, take the vial of tears. You seem to be our tank. Wait, did he say six damage to everyone Jassa can see? While returning to the cabin you walk into a small clearing near a stream. It looks like the perfect place to set up a camp. Why no, go to cabin. I know it's only a few miles back to the cabin but we need to camp here tonight. It's a working theory and tonight should prove whether it is correct or not. Sounds like a good plan. Break out the rations, it's a picnic. Did anyone bring a big 60? Tefri herding, rest here on ground. I will gather up a night's worth of dead wood and get us a fire going. I think we should get to sleep early. I fear we will be attacked around midnight. What is going to attack us in the night? Wolves most likely, but could be spiders, bandits, wraiths. By chance, are any of you carrying an ancient evil ring? Are you sure you haven't been eating shrooms? It would explain a lot. We have followed you this far, we are with you no matter how crazy you sound. Wake bear when it's clobbering time. I think I have reached a conclusion. I will know more in the morning, if we survive the night. Since I only need to meditate for a few hours I will take second and third watch if you will take first Bordan, we can let Tefri and Jassa sleep. Jassa. As you settle down you see a small slip of paper fall from inside the scroll of destruction on your belt holder and flutter to the ground. I discreetly pick up the paper and read it quietly. It reads, I trust you will do the deed. This might help, just make sure the boys are behind you when you read it. Signed, simply, Mayor. I slide the paper in my pouch. Narrator, I pretend to be asleep but I have a light spell ready to cast. While on watch I keep an arrow notched and ready to fire. Sarfa, around midnight you see the forms of many large wolves emerge from the mist surrounding the campfire circle. I yell wolves, and drop the nearest one with an arrow. He drops dead. With a great howl, they surge forward. Roar, bear hates wolves. Who, what, where? I grab my battle axe lying beside me and get up ready to slay. I cast my light spell before initiative starts. Some of the wolves' eagerness seems quelled by the sudden light and their initiative is decreased by half. Everyone roll initiative, Tefri and Beardin, you must use your first action of the first round to grab your axe and stand up, or get oriented from being awakened. Jassa, we could use another of those clutch plays. I attack the nearest two. You slay two of the beasts. This is my moment. I will prepare and cast my shatter spell. To everyone's amazement, including my own, your spell goes off with a loud crack killing every single wolf since they were all fodder with one hit point. I am so happy, but kinda sad for all the wolves. Well done Jassa. Whoa, that was impressive. Tefri no, get to Maul. Tefri want to know why you know about wolves. Let us leave this place of death and get to our fishing cabin. I will tell you all what I believe there. You get back to your cabin as dawn breaks and settle in for a nice warm breakfast of rations and wilted carrots. Okay lass, now tell us what is going on. Okay, I will level with you guys. I think we are stuck in the example village. All we seem to run into are one-off examples that are somehow connected because we broke the system. Think about it. We fought a necromancer in a cemetery, met at a tavern, fought some cheesy flowers and push over cultists. We then run into a bridge troll while headed to the farm. A bridge troll. Then it's orcs, now an attack on our camp. This is all basic stuff. It's a wonder we didn't have to cross a swift moving creek on a log. However, 
I think I know where it all leads. It's simple role-playing. Today we will confront the mayor of this village. Before you start on your activities for the day, we need to do some paperwork. First off you each gain three more experience for the last couple of encounters. We also need to roll for armor depletion on Tefri, Bordin, and Sarfa. Sarfa your leather armor has suffered damage and needs mending. Until it is fixed it will only provide one AR. You all have 10 experience or more, what do you spend it on? I get the tough trait so I will now have 8 hit points instead of 6. That reduces me to 2 experience points remaining. I get the tracker trait. I now test tracking things at advantage and can always tell true north when out of doors. Tefri get vigilant trait, so bear rolls, 3 initiative. Now, he is fast as dwarf. I get the die-hard trait which will help me if I am ever trapped in a high-rise during the holidays. I mean to say if I am reduced to zero hit points I gain two hit points, this can occur once per day. Let's go run our errands and meet at the bit pig before confronting the mayor. I will sell these weapons and gems and meet you all there. I will go get my armor mended and meet you all at the bit pig. Tefri go to pig that squeals to drink. You all meet at the bit pig after running your errands. Bordin managed to sell the weapons and gems for a total of 28 gold which has been divided among the party. Sarfa has managed to find a leathersmith to stick up his armor but it won't be ready for two days. Jasa, you are fairly sure here you can find the mayor and Tefri has managed to get pretty drunk. Let's go finish this. You locate Mayor Whittlefield in front of the village town hall. Whittlefield is surrounded by several of the town guards, mean brutes who look like they know their business. Whittlefield appears surprised by your group but asks politely how may he help you. Hello I am the town Mayor Whittlefield how may I help you? Mayor Whittlefield, we know what you have been up to and we have come to put an end to it. The mayor looks at you with a blank expression. We know about you telling the troll to live under the bridge terrorizing people and we know you put the orcs up to attacking your village. We also foiled a cultist plot by several of your town cronies. Don't stand there looking confused. This is where you monologue and finally say you would have got away with it too but for us meddling kids. The troll? Embert came here looking for a new home after being driven out of the Southlands. I told him he could live under the bridge after he helped us defeat the orc raiding band, as long as he helped the city maintain it which would cost about 20 gold a month. I knew we had a necromancer hanging around the cemetery, but he never bothered anyone and always put people's loved ones back where they were raised when he was done using their corpses. I was unaware we had cultists though until I spoke with poor Anna at Ulf's funeral. Then what about this note I found? I hand the mayor the note I found. Yeah, I wrote the note. It was given to my town clerk Osbard, a scroll reader, with a scroll of destruction out of the village archives. He was unfortunately killed in the battle at the bridge with many of our fine lads when we defeated the orc band. I am guessing he never had a chance to use the scroll. I don't understand. You are an honest hard-working mayor. That doesn't make any sense. You all feel a strong gust of wind blow down the street and a sudden sense of dread as a giant form emerges over the hills surrounding the town. Oh no, I got it all wrong. The mayor isn't the final fight. It's that, that, dragon! The dragon roars over the town, spewing a giant spurt of flame. The roofs of buildings all around you burst into flames. To arms men, the dragon has returned! The dragon makes one last fiery pass further into the town and then flies away to the distant hills with a giant roar. You can hear bells ringing across the town as villagers rush to save their homes and businesses. The dragon has not stirred from his cavern for 100 years. What has awoken him now I wonder? You must go there and defeat him or this village and all its inhabitants are doomed. Well it looks like we have two choices gang. 
We can stay here and be irrelevant and ultimately be deleted by the GM. Or we can go out in a blaze of glory with the ultimate role-playing quest. You had me at Dragon. Tefri has nothing better to do. You know I am coming. I have always wanted to be like that musician that slew the beast over the city on the pond. We might also find some sweet dragon horde. I must go help my people save the village. Please save us from this beast. It is late in the afternoon when you finally reach the blasted and charred entrance to the dragon's lair. You can hear a slight rumbling noise from inside that sounds like a snore. Maybe the beast is once again asleep. As you creep into the mouth of the cave you observe the giant slumbering dragon laying on scattered coins and gems in the back of the lair. The place reeks of dragon. I motion for the others to wait in the cave entrance while I approach the dragon to see if it is truly asleep. I have a shield spell prepared. As you get close, you see the dragon slowly open its eyes and look right at you. You don't hear its voice in your ears, instead it seems to be speaking directly to your mind. Only Jossa can hear the voice. I know you, I know are, you, here. Know you are here. I can smell, I can, you. I can smell, I can smell you. you. It has been it a has long, been a long, long time, time since I have been challenged, been challenged by, by, human. by a human. Woman, woman, woman. Why did you burn the village in the valley? I was summoned, I was summoned, and, I summoned and, I came, and, I, and I came. Destroy, destroy, destroy loot, loot, and, loot, and, pillage, and pillage is what, is what, I, is what I, love. I love. We have come to stop you. We do not want to fight you, but we shall if you don't vow to leave the village alone. I sense, I sense you are troubled. You, troubled. you feel you, you are, you are, you are at something, at something magic. magic, magic. Yes, yes, magic, yes. magic, magic. I can help, I can help, I can you. help you. I can teach you strong, you strong, magic. strong magic. magic. Come to come, me, my, come child. Me, my child. child. You feel yourself drawn from your hiding place and a strong desire to surrender to the glorious creature. Yes, I do struggle with the randomness of magic. However. My magic will never be used for evil. If you won't agree to leave the village in peace then you must perish. I cry out for the others to come help before I can no longer resist the lure of the beast. It is trying to control my will, we have to kill it. You all suddenly hear the dragon in your heads. Fools, Fools you, you cannot, cannot slay, slay, me. slay me, I am, I am, I am forever. forever. Let's go. Jessa is in trouble. Clobbering time. Everyone, roll for initiative. I fire my crossbow at the dragon. Your bolt misses. I equip my battle axe and move my free five feet. I fire two arrows at the dragon. Your arrows barely penetrate its hide. This is not going to be easy. I try and cast the destruction spell on the dragon. You fail to cast the spell. I will fall back. Tefri move closer behind rocks with Jossa. The dragon approaches Jossa and a sudden jet of fiery breath surrounds you. The rock absorbs most of the blast but you take two damage. I charge in and battleaxe the beast in the belly. Your attack does three damage to his armored hide. I move up my free five feet and fire at the dragon where Bordan has struck him. You penetrate the remaining point of hide and do four damage to the dragon. I cast my scroll of protection from the cult leader onto Burden. Excellent. 
Now I cast heal on myself. Perfectly normal. Bordin, you are now protected for six rounds, all attacks against you, even magical, suffer disadvantage. Bear Claw. Tefri, you damage the dragon for two more hit points. The dragon bites at Tefri twice, but doesn't penetrate his leather armor. I battle axe. You damage the dragon's armor for two points. I let them fly. You damage the dragon's armor for two points. Narrator. Can I see Tefri and Burden if I stand behind the rock? Not unless you lean out to either side. Can I see the dragon? Yes, he towers over you. That is all I need to know. I concentrate and cast the spell of destruction. With a ear splitting bang the spell goes off. The dragon is jolted by a strong blast and takes six damage. She is visibly shaken. Seems like someone has got her groove back. Your magic, Your magic is strong, is strong human. Human. I, I, I am proud, proud of you. Of you. Tefri equip club and clobber. You do one damage to the dragon. The dragon tries to do a tail swipe but fails. The dragon breathes fire on Tefri and causes two damage. More battle axe. We simply need more battle axe. You reduce its armor to zero. I pull out my black arrow and shoot. You do not have a black arrow. I rubbed one down with soot. Sigh. Your soot covered arrow does one damage. I cast shield on Tefri. I use my hero point. That succeeded because I am a hero. I cast blast on dragon. Your blast rocks the dragon for one damage. You do not have to die. Tefri, clobber. Tefri, you clobber the dragon for four damage. No, this cannot be. I cannot be defeated. I am the red dragon, a beast to be feared. Songs are sung about me and children cry when my name is spoken. How could I be defeated by such a ragtag bunch of miscreants? You are surprised to hear the voice not in your head, but coming from the dragon. We are not the puny challenges you are used to. We are example characters, and we also have the protagonist protection. Jassa brought her A-game. It was four on one to be honest. You need some fodder. Well that and I don't think the GM really had time to balance you NPCs to the home-ruled combat system he made adding criticals. What do you intend to do to me? We mean no further harm to you if you swear to go back to sleep and leave the village below alone for another hundred years. I can't go back to sleep. I am awoken now. I desire to feed and pillage. Well there is an old stone tower in the forest west of town that has a bunch of dead orcs in it. You might also talk to Embert the Troll at the bridge west of town. Mayor Whittlefield said he came to the village fleeing trouble in the south. There might be need for some burning and pillaging down there. I will swear on it and leave the village in peace. I will rest for a spell and then visit this troll Embert. New lands to plunder might be what this old dragon needs. Although I begrudge every cent, I cannot stop you as I am defeated. Take what treasure you can carry. All we ask is 1,000 gold coins is our right. I can carry a lot more than that. 
What red dragon name? I am Aspericola Vantridi Mononia, daughter of Derma Vantravargastica, the winged terror. That's a mouthful. Tefri give tears in a vial to Asperica. You find yourselves back in your rented cabin. You could possibly believe it all to have been a dream if it wasn't for the first-degree burns and smell of burnt bear hair. Well, and the large sack of gold. The party divides the coins and each member gains 250 coins. Well guys I think this is the last meeting. Jasa, when you empty the last coin out of the bag a folder parchment falls out. I open the parchment. It's good to be rich, even if it's only till we are deleted. Tefri going to miss you guys. We could have gotten more treasure. I wouldn't worry about that. I spread the parchment on the table.